Today we will be learning how to take blood pressure manually. For this activity, we will need a stethoscope pictured here and a sphygmo manometer consisting of a blood pressure cuff and a dial pictured here. There are multiple sizes for blood pressure cuffs, so it's important to select the cuff that is appropriate for your subject's arm circumference. All right, so when we are going to take blood pressure with a subject, the first thing we want them to do is to be in a seated position typically for rest. We can take other measures, but today I'm just going to be showing you the seated. So as you can see, the subject has their back up against the back of the chair here. Their feet are flat on the ground and they're not crossed. We then take the subject's arm. We can use right or left. In this uh, demonstration, we'll be using right. And if you notice, we have him place his arm right on the table. He's supported at the wrist and he's supported at the elbow. Okay, so this is nice that the table is being able to support this, but we could also use support by ourselves. So we could hold the subject's arm like this. The big thing, the arm needs to stay at heart level, okay, when we take this blood pressure measure. When we apply the cuff, as you guys saw in the previous picture, there's an arrow to align the brachial artery. So when we place this cuff on, we make sure that we pull any clothing up above. We don't want to keep any clothing underneath. As we place the cuff around, we will line up this, uh, this arrow here with the brachial artery. Height of the cuff right here. When we apply the cuff, it looks like this. We want to pull it snug, okay? Because it being too loose or too tight will impact the measurements as we take them, okay? So this is snug. We can pull on this a little bit. It doesn't really move, okay? It doesn't slide down his arm, but it's also not cutting off any type of circulation gauge here. With the stethoscope now, what you see here is actually a te teaching stethoscope. It has two um, ear pieces. We then have the bell of the stethoscope. If you notice, it has a large side and a small side. When we place it down, we want to place the large side okay, against the skin. All right? Placing the small side, you won't hear anything. Another thing to note is these bells will turn on and off. So if you put these in your ear and you tap on this and don't hear anything, probably the, the bell is off. You just have to turn it, and it'll open it up and turn it on. Okay. Another thing with the stethoscopes, if you notice, the earbuds are actually angled, okay? We want these angled towards the front of your face, okay? So your ear canals run towards your eyes. The earbuds should angle that way as well. So it should go in right like this, okay? Before you go along and take the blood pressure, you want to palpate for the brachial artery, okay? Which you should have learned in the heart rate lab. Palpate, locate it, so then the bell of the stethoscope would go right over where it was palpated. You want to make sure the bell of the stethoscope sits flat against the skin or as best as you can. Um, any type of gap is going to make it more difficult to hear the sounds. Okay. Um, when you place these in, again, earbuds towards the front. If you notice, the, the bell of the stethoscope is not underneath the cuff. Remember, this is going to inflate. So if the, if the bell is underneath the cuff, it's going to add a bunch of extra noise, making it more difficult to hear the sounds that we're listening for. So we want to make sure we go from un, out from underneath the cuff, and that's where the two fingers come into play um, above the bend in the elbow. Okay? When you inflate the cuff, um, your goal is to go about 30 millimeters of mercury above the systolic pressure. Um, rule of thumb, we start at 200. Um, but sometimes it can be lower, sometimes it can be higher. It's always nice to ask your subject if they know their systolic pressure be prior to starting. So if they know their systolic pressure is 120, you'd probably be safe with 150 or 160. In order to read blood pressure, you will hear certain tapping sounds as you deflate the cuff. The first sound you hear is the first Karatikov sound, and that is the systolic pressure. The cessation of tapping is the diastolic pressure. These pressures are very light and it's very important to stay focused, otherwise you may miss them. So I'm going to take a, a full measure here and show you what it looks like.
This subject's blood pressure was 122 over 80. The following chart provided by the American Heart Association provides us values for normotensive, prehypertensive, and hypertensive patients. Based on these guidelines, our subject falls into the prehypertensive category. Now we will briefly touch on how to set a subject up for exercising blood pressure. Please note that the cuff placement will be exactly the same, but it's more difficult as the subject is standing on a treadmill. A blood pressure while someone's exercising, you want to have the arm, just as we showed earlier, resting right at heart level and you want to be supporting it. You're going to put the cuff um, just in the same place that it was on the brachial artery and the bell will be on the same spot as before. It'll be a little bit more difficult to hear the sounds this time, so you really have to concentrate as you're inflating and deflating the cuff. It's important to take blood pressure during exercise for high-risk cardiovascular groups. Now you should be equipped to do that, and we will practice in lab.